and they paid his private jet expenses while announcing that he had flown in on a British Airways flight that didn't even exist. And we caught him out in that lie and exposed him on national television. So he is going around flying in private jets, but he knows now that the best thing is to pretend that he's not flying in on a private jet. And so we had the airport watch to see how he flew out, and sure enough, he flew out on a private jet as well. And this is what's going on. They're now living a lie. They're telling us we've got to, to cut down. And I commend you, sir, for having not just stayed frightened, but gone and done your own research so as to find out whether people were telling the truth. Because in the end, that is how this scam is going to come to an end. When enough people have thought this through for themselves, they don't believe what they're told by their teachers, they don't believe what they're told by governments, they certainly don't believe what they're told by the likes of Prince Charles and Al Gore, who are both contemptible for living high on the hog and asking us to live like paupers. And these people are wrong, and you have found out that they're wrong, and you've done so just by going and looking at I agree, the I agree. John in Australia, go ahead and finish your... Yeah, any well, other comments for Lord Mongton? Um, yeah, well, I'd just like to th thank you both. Th thank you, uh, Christopher, because um, without people like you and Alex, we would uh, just be remaining dumbed down zombies. Well, brother, thank you. Well, don't thank me, though. Don't we're, don't we're all in this together. I mean, we're all into this fraud. We're all together. Philip in Arizona, you're on the air with Christopher Moncton. Go ahead. Good afternoon. I was recently carefully reading the text of an Obama speech from 2012 to the United Nations. That speech is the source of his quote, the future must not belong to those who slander uh, the name of the prophet of Allah. As I was reading the text, it occurred to me, and the question is, do you agree that one of the things he's really trying to do is unify the Muslim world, specifically heal the rift between Shia and Sunni? Sure, is that for Moncton or me? Because I'll just say, I never believe this, but it's true now. Obama is trying to create some weird... Sunni caliphate, and I, it's just totally insane. I can't believe the elite would allow this. Lord Moncton? I, I, I think that, that that is a very shrewd remark. Um, Obama has talked of my Muslim faith, and I was very su suspicious of the whole Reverend Wright affair. I thought that the main purpose of that affair was to make it look as though Obama was a Christian worshipper, when we all know perfectly well that he's a Muslim. So I think that what's happened there is that he is indeed using his office, or abusing his office, to advance the Muslims, and he's coming dangerously close to advancing the cause of the terrorists too. And I think there is—I I think he'll be quite lucky not to be impeached. I, I know agree. That, uh, Donald Trump is saying, "Look, we won't impeach." I him. agree, Lord Moncton, but it's hard for me to even believe, though it's happening, that he's worth Turkey shipping the oil, protecting ISIS. I can't believe our elite would allow a president to openly back Al Qaeda, but he's doing it. I mean, this, I can't even believe this. I'm the big conspiracy theorist, and I cannot compute like Robbie the Robot. I have smoke coming out of my, my gears. This is insane. It is insane, and the insanity is that the, so silent is the establishment in the face of this outrageous attempt by Obama to align himself with the terrorists by refusing point blank time and time and time and time again ever to use the name of Islam in connection with the name of terrorist, when 98% of all terrorist acts over the last 25 Islamic. years have been perpetrated worldwide have been perpetrated in the name of Allah. And he won't say this. And he won't say to the Muslim world, our Muslim friends, our Muslim brothers, they are our brothers too. We, we should not hate every Muslim. Of course I agree, I don't hate Muslims, but These my God, the they get this. preserved civilization for us from the 9th to the 12th centuries when we were messing around in the Dark Ages. And they were the leading lights of civilization. They preserved the great classical texts that I studied at Cambridge of, Rome, of Greece and Rome when we had no interest in them. They kept all that for us. These are people that, to whom we should look up. So how have they, they degenerated? Because you're right, they've been a leading light. And what we should be doing as, as world leaders is trying to lead Islam back to the era of scholarship and learning rather than of the sword. And book we need burning. to get away from the sword verses and get back to the learning for which Islam was once renowned worldwide. And Obama, in that degree, has absolutely nothing to offer us he will prove to have been one of the most damaging and otherwise irrelevant presidents. The well, United that's my States. question. Why would the elite back radical book burning, woman enslaving Islam when there's so many great forms of it, as you historically point out? Go ahead, Lord Moncton. Thank you, Philip. The, 
The reason is very, very straightforward, and that is that the Islam in its present manifestation is totalitarian, the left are totalitarian, and the communists, the fascists were totalitarian. This is the age-old battle that the Chinese philosophers meditated upon. I've said this before. Confucius. Yeah. Chinese philosophers have always said the division was between the totalitarians on one side and the libertarians on the other. You and I, Alex, are libertarians. The, Muslim, the Islam and the world's left are now united in a totalitarian desire to push the rest of us around. And that's what this is about. It's not just that Obama uh, talks of his Muslim faith. It is that he is ideologically a totalitarian. He recognizes that Islam in its present form is also ideologically totalitarian. Only one view, only so one So they're faith. allied. Lord Moncton, we got to go to break. Do five more minutes with us, then we'll let you go and get back to that important uh, cocktail party you're having with the French uh, folks that are actually pro-science. So that so we'll run this blockade of dark agers. Lord Moncton, I want to take a call or two in, in, in closing, but... Other key points you want to add, what's coming up at this conference, you helped get the secret documents five years ago in Copenhagen, blow their plan for massive taxes on the third world, worldwide. Will this conference be successful? What do we do as boffins to make sure this Death Star blows up? Here's the thing. This conference will declare success. It will go into an extra day. This is part of the stage management that every single conference follows. They'll come out bleary-eyed with their ties around their ears and the stubble on their chin and announce victory. But actually, it'll be just like all the others. They will always want more. They want to keep this process going because there are actually four conferences every year. There's only one big one where the heads of state come, but there are actually four conferences every year. And a lot of in-between meetings, they travel all over the globe at our expense. And there's no way that this is going to stop while we continue to pay them to do this. So I think what we've got to do is to start prosecuting one or two of the fraudsters, put them away, uh, and lock them away for 10 years for fraud, and the rest will run for cover and the scare will collapse quite quickly, and then these conferences will stop. The UN, meanwhile, is beginning to use the IPCC structure as a way of setting up other global bodies on different areas of the environment to tie in with their Agenda 21, their Agenda 2030 program, and that is also being peddled very hard at this conference and is largely being supported by governments who haven't realized that this is going to affect directly not only their sovereignty over their nations, they don't mind that too much because they see themselves as part of the global government rather than part of a national government, but it's also going to start affecting their individual property rights. That's where this is headed. Already in places like Australia, where Agenda 21 has been adopted by several left-wing councils, property rights have been virtually extinguished. The same in New Zealand. It's beginning to happen in the UK and in the United States, where left-wing councils are doing deals privately with the UN round the back of their national governments. This is another one that's going to have to be watched very carefully over the next few years. But no, I think from here on, this is the dirty high tide mark in the bath of the dirty water of socialist climate change nonsense. What is going to happen is we've now pulled the plug on this. The bath is running out, and the Paris conference will be recognized as the high tide mark. This is as far as they go. From here on in, it's all going to collapse around them. And by the way, Lord Moncton, you've been on my show for 15 years. You've been here for 15 years. You have never been this positive, so I know you're not just saying this. You're the leading mind against these people and their eugenicist program. You're saying this is the beginning of the end, that we have reached the high mark. This is amazing. From here on, we, the lovers of freedom, are going to organize in the same way that they have organized. We're beginning that at this conference here. There is going to be a new international party of freedom, which is going to stand up for all the ideals that you and I hold dear, free market, libertarian thinking, the vision of your founding fathers. We want to globalize that vision and take on the totalitarians head on and say to them, enough is enough. Freedom is the way forward for the world. Without freedom, there can be no advance. We merely slip back into the dark ages. We've been there before. We don't want to go there again. And we are now going to win this because of the strategic mistake they made in tying their totalitarian world government ambitions to the nonsense that was global warming. And I say was because there's now going to be virtually none. Now they say it's change. Yeah, just any change. change.
Now, any change is just an excuse for them. Lord Moncton, Godspeed, silence and public policy.org. Reporting from France, we'll be tracking everything you do. The Infowars.com. We salute you for your stand for human liberty and renaissance. God bless you, Lord Moncton. God bless you. God bless America. Let's speak next week and wrap up for the conference. Absolutely, sir. You bet. All right, folks. Coming up, Joe Biggs from the Cal Caliphate Training Center. Stay with us.